Perspective is just the way something looks from where we stand in relation to it. We can be standing looking up at something. We can be looking through something. We can be looking up at something. But an object's perspective is the way it looks from where we happen to be at that point looking at it. When we look at an object from one point of view, it has a certain perspective. But if we change our position, then the perspective of that building changes as well because we're now seeing it from a different point of view. The important thing with perspective is the eye level. That's the level where our eyes are as we stand looking at something. And if we're looking at it straight on, the sight lines of that object go back and join. And where they join is always on the eye level. When we're front on to an object, they all go back to one place, which is called the vanishing point, because it's where the object would vanish if it were to stretch right the way back to that point. And so this is called one point perspective. Or if we're looking at numerous objects, but still front on, they will all go back to the one point in the center on our eye level, and it's still one point perspective. However, if we stand at an angle to an object, so we're looking, say, at a corner, then the sight lines go off in two different directions. So we have two vanishing points, but still on our eye level. And it works the same way, even if the object is more complicated than a box. So what does three point perspective mean? Where's our third vanishing point? Well, again, we start with eye level and we're going to need the two vanishing points that we've looked at in two point perspective. However, for this third point, we need to look up. Now the top of our building will still go to our two vanishing points. But if the building's very tall, what can happen is instead of these lines going straight up, they actually angle towards the top. And that's because foreshortening comes into play. Foreshortening is the principle that as an object moves further away from us, it compresses. Visually, it compresses. So in a scene such as this, this window's width and this window's width, although in real life they're the same, become narrower as the windows move further away from us. And when we draw, we have to allow for that. But the visual compression doesn't just happen as we move away horizontally. It also happens as we move away further away vertically. And as visually the building, in this case, compresses as it gets higher and higher, as it gets narrower and narrower, it adopts this pointed vantage point. And of course, we see this in life when we stand low down in front of a skyscraper and watch it go up. Now, if we were to continue these lines up to where they reached, if we were to use our perspective lines, then in fact, they would meet off the page. And we have our eye level, but in fact, there is such a thing as what I like to call a vertical eye level, the point directly in front of our eyes. Perspective angles work the same way. We know that the further away from eye level, a line is, the steeper the angle becomes, regardless of which direction it's moving. And that this is a pattern that we can anticipate of how these lines are angled. The same principle is true with the vertical perspective. The further away from the vertical eye level line, a line becomes the greater the angle. And if it goes in the other direction, then the angle increases in the other direction. So if our building had a bit more building stuck onto it, it would angle out in this way. And all of these lines would meet at the vanishing point that is up here. And if it came out still further, we can see the principles are exactly the same, regardless of where 
the vanishing point is, whether it's off to the side or whether it's above. So how does this look in real life? Here we have the tower of a church in Germany. We can see that there'll be two vanishing points, one on each side of this tower. But what we also have is we have a vertical perspective line directly in front of us. We can also see that because this tower is very tall, we can see that the sides of the tower are angling inwards. And we can see that if we were to continue these lines, they would in fact meet on this vertical eye level. The horizontal eye level is in fact below the level of our picture here. And again, the important thing to remember is that as an object moves away from us in perspective, that visually it becomes compressed. And so the most compressed part of this tower is going to be the part up the top. So this actual spire bit in real life is going to be taller than it perhaps appears to be here. I want you to imagine how if you could see this tower in real life, looking at it from the side, from some distance away, how tall you think this spire on top is going to be. Did you imagine it was going to be this tall? In fact, if we compare the spire to the tower, we can actually see that this part of our building is taller than all that we see here. That's the effect of foreshortening. That's the effect of the visual compressing that takes place as objects move away from us vertically in three point perspective. But if I know how it looks in real life, it can tempt me to want to draw it a bit taller because I know how tall it is. And it can be hard to limit myself to what I can actually see just from this viewpoint. We can see here our tower in our village. But there's another way that three point perspective can look and that is this way. Well, when would we see this in real life? For many years, this was the tallest building in Australia. If we look in the distance here, we can see the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And if we look carefully, we can see the tip of the Opera House sails, but we're actually standing in the Sydney Tower to have this view. And so we are now higher than all of these buildings. We can see that directly in front of us is here. And if we look at our perspective lines on this skyscraper, as it goes down, down, down into the distance, but this time in a downward direction, we can see that they will meet actually below ground level. We can also see if we look at these what look like black slits, which are actually the windows, we can see that as they move down the face of the building, they became narrower and narrower and closer and closer together as the effect of foreshortening happens. As visual compression of what we're looking at happens, this is also a situation now where eye level, horizontal eye level, is actually going to be off our photo, but this time to the top not the bottom because I'm taller than everything we're looking at in this view. However, if we were to measure the very close to one point perspective that we get from this view, looking up the long narrow streets of Sydney in this direction. We can see in fact that eye level isn't too far off our photo. It's where these two red lines meet. In this view of the Berlin Concert Hall, again, we can see all the principles of three point perspective happening. If for instance, we were to take two of the perspective lines in this direction, we can see that they meet up there. And that then gives us our horizontal eye level which is just higher than all the buildings we see because we are in a very tall church tower. We can also see that there is a vertical perspective directly in front of us. And we can see, in fact, there is a vanishing point that goes down on each side of this vertical perspective. And we can see that vanishing point is going to be right down below ground level. We can also see that there is another vanishing point 
off to the side here. That will be right off the page on the right hand side. And that will give us a vanishing point on eye level, but right out of view. And that will be our one, two, and then down deep underground three vanishing points. The important thing to realize is that these vanishing points, they're ways of describing what we actually see. If we know that perspective works this way, when I'm looking at this scene, it helps me to see it more exactly, more accurately. And because accurate observation, I think, is the key to good drawing, the more we can understand and observe accurately what we're looking at, the easier it is to actually draw it accurately. But if we know exactly what we're looking at, because we understand the patterns that perspective causes, then it's easier to draw it more accurately. And anything that makes my drawing more accurate is, in my opinion, a good thing. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope that was helpful. One, two, three point perspective. It's really all the same thing. From wherever we view a particular item or object, where we are in relation to something we're looking at will affect the way it appears to us. And there are certain principles that we can use to understand how something's going to look. And they are a great help if we understand them in drawing. The important thing is if it's helpful, then use it. If it's not helpful, then just put it to one side and have fun. See you next time. Bye.